Okay, this is part two of this particular tutorial. I'm creating it on the 2018 iPad, the 9.7. This is a new iPad that is newly compatible with the Apple Pencil, so I thought it'd be interesting to do a tutorial on this smaller form factor just to see whether it's possible to reproduce the kind of effects that um, and the kind of finish that I would on an iPad Pro. I do lots of these kind of tutorials anyway, and so I just thought I would apply one of those tutorials to this particular iPad and see what the end result could be. So in the first part of this tutorial, which is linked in the description, I did the sky. Now, in this part, I'm going to not ignore those layers, but I'm going to create more layers, and I'm going to start applying some different features, landscape features that will go over, partly obstruct the sky, but obviously make sense of the whole scene. Now, I did explain in the previous video, I've got a color palette here already pre-selected. These particular colors have a value and a, a hexadecimal code which is represented here. Now all of these codes that correspond to these particular colors are in the description below as well. So all you have to do once you come to this section, now the app is Procreate. If you've not got Procreate, you're gonna find this impossible. But if you've got Procreate, you can come into this section. So you go into the color wheel along to the value. And then all you do is select this area, type in the code that I've supplied you, press done, and you'll find that the color has been selected for you. Now I've already used these colors for the sky and I'm going to use this middle section of colors for the landscape. And the bottom section of colors are colors that I'm going to use for the water. I may use a mixture of those different colors. I may deviate from that color palette slightly, but this is generally the, the colors that I'm going to use. So having created another layer, first thing I'm going to do is go to my color palette and I've got a color selected here. And this is going to be for the distant land formations. So as I explained on my previous tutorial, I'm using the airbrush. I'm using this exclusively. I'm not getting involved in textured brushes for this stage. I'm going to change it to maybe a medium brush though, because I don't want the edges of these mountains to be too soft. So I'm going to place them in now. Can always go back later on and tidy these forms up, but I just needed to create like a, a horizon line, a range of more distant rocky features. Now I've kept them quite shallow, quite in a narrow band. If I start to make them too tall, they will start to be, well, the distance, including the perspective, is going to make them look absolutely enormous if they're supposed to be in the background. I'm going to reserve the bigger shapes for the more foreground uh, mountainous shapes. So these are quite distant, therefore they're going to be quite a thin band on the horizon line itself. So I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to start creating all these different formations on different layers. It's very easy to forget to do this, so if you don't remember to do this, it's not the end of the world, but just in terms of keeping yourself organised, it might be a good idea. So I'm going to use this now to create some rock structures that will be slightly lower down in the frame, perhaps coming more towards uh, the, you as the viewer, but it might also have some formations that are taller as well. Again, these may well get obscured by even closer formations, but I'm just starting to get a, a sense of what the picture could be. I can't afford to be too precious at this stage about any particular shape or formation, doesn't really matter. If it gets covered over by other things, then that's, that's the way it needs to be. So if I create another layer, I'm going to go along to the next color, and this is gonna be some even nearer to mountains or rock formations, and you start to get the idea as these build up. So it's important you put it on 100%, because if you don't, on the opacity, because if you don't, you're gonna see it as a transparency. These should not be transparent at all, so I'm putting it right to 100%, and I'm pressing on quite firmly as well. Again, create another layer, move along to the next color. One of the really useful things about having it on different layers, if I wanted to go back to this first layer of mountains that I created and I decided that they are too dark, I can always go onto that layer and just lighten them up like this. It really knocks them back, or I can darken them up. Obviously, I don't need to do that, but if I wanted to lighten them up slightly, which I think I do, I don't want to be overly dramatic with it, but there you can see. Or another option, instead of doing that, would be to go to the layer properties and turn the opacity down a little bit, and that has the same effect. Same um, effect. In fact, I think that's slightly better because then it makes it translucent and shows some of the warmer colors of the sky coming through, 
which makes it blend better with the sky. And also there's a feature there that, I don't know, it looks kind of wrong now as I look at it. So I'm going to remove a section there. So I'll create another layer and I'm going to move along to a darker color now. And at this point we're getting much closer to and so there's a real darkening up. And I'm going to, like I said earlier, you can't afford to be too precious because there's some bits there that are light, but I'm going to start obscuring them now. And that's just the way it ends up in a painting sometimes. And you can't let your painting dictate to you too much. Sometimes you just got to be prepared to destroy something that kind of looks quite nice for the benefit, the sake of what you, your larger intention is. But again, the beauty of layers is that if you change your mind, you can just undo that layer. I wanted to move this particular set of shapes further back. The best way of doing that is to rub back the horizon point of that. Obviously, I'm going to start adding water features in here anyway, but I just wanted to push those back a little bit more. Maybe the water is starting to emerge in this scene about that point. So there will be some nearer to formations, but maybe the, the line of the water line starts about here. I'll create another layer. It's easy to get lost in these slight variations of grey, but I've got a colour here that is I don't know whether you can see, but it is a very dark green. If I go on to here and show you on the colour disc, you can see that it's a very greyed out, very dark version, but it is a green. Now that's important because as you get closer to with these formations, you're going to notice more of what the colour of the, the actual forms are. So there's going to be plant life, there's going to be maybe some grass growing, there's going to be greenery. So it's important that that colour starts to be represented in the, the palette at this point. Okay, I feel like this encroaches too far into the scene, so I'm just going to push it back a little bit. Okay, so I've got the general effect of the mountains or the, the kind of rocky outcrops, whatever they are. I mean, I'm not entirely clear at this point what they are supposed to be. It's very mountainous looking, but that's fine. And I've got the distant layer there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the color of that distant mountain range and I'm going to start using that color now to start almost creating a lot, a kind of a mist effect. So I'm going to go to somewhere that's a bit closer just so I can experiment with that. So it's not really that layer I'm after. Well, I'll show you what I'm after. I'm after that this area here. So between there and there, I want to create a sense of a mist in that region. So I just need to find that layer which is there, and I need to create another layer for the in-between. I've already got the colour selected, which was, if I go back to the colours, was the first colour here. So I'm using the colour from the background and I'm starting to place it in slightly more foreground. I need to change to the soft airbrush for this, turn the opacity down quite low, and I'm just, on this layer, I'm going to start placing in something that breaks up the bottom area here. So now you get more of a range from the top of that structure to the bottom. So it, it's got a fading down kind of effect. So going back to the first layer, the top or the top layer rather, I'm going to start using some of the last few colors here. Now I've got a kind of almost a brown, it's very dark, very grayed out, but it's a kind of brown color, a very dark green and then a lighter green. So I'm just gonna concentrate maybe on the lighter green to begin with on this layer. I'm just gonna start adding some textures in here. The light is gonna start picking up the edges of some of these shapes. sure quite how well it's going to show up on camera but that's fine it doesn't mean it, it it shouldn't be there it's only going to be a subtle effect but it's just going to add a bit more warmth into the more foreground shapes okay i'm going to come back to that but i'm going to create another layer and i'm going to move down to the the colors in this area now these are going to be the water colors and they're going to have a slightly different kind of color scheme more towards the blues i may well extend some of these colors up into the, the landscape as well just to try and bring the two together but I definitely wanted more of a focus on blue in this region. So what I want to do is on this layer, just start feeding it in from the edges to begin with. I can turn my brush size up. In fact, I might just get rid of this bottom color, just feed in the blue, fill in all of that. So then I've got a different color scheme to work with right from the outset. Uh, one trick that might be quite useful at this point is if I share the image as a JPEG, save the image, So then with this, this layer flipped, I can condense the layer. I can 
position it like so. So then when all I need to do now is erase the top part of that layer and I will have created a mirror image. Careful not to erase too much of it. And this is a really good option if you want to do like a very still water, very calm, exact. Because obviously it would have to be really quite like glass, absolutely tranquil, very still water in order to reflect perfectly like this. However, that's not quite the, the look that I'm going to go for. I'm going to create a little bit more turbulence than that, which is why I've got a range of colours here that I'm going to start using to disrupt and interrupt the kind of the textures that are in here and the colours. First thing I might do though, is go into the smudge tool, this layer, and I'm going to pick something that I wouldn't normally do. Like I was saying before, normally I would just use the airbrush, but I'm considering now that maybe a different brush might actually be useful. So I'm just going to experiment here. I'm on the artistic brushes and I'm going to try the turpentine. And I'm just going to use that brush to disrupt some of these cloud shapes. I don't want the cloud shapes to be visible, not in an exact reflection anyway. I want the light and the colors to some degree, but I don't want the exact formations. And that's the same for the mountain ranges as well. So I'm just using it to create a slightly more textured, more broken appearance than I would get with an airbrush. I will go back to using the airbrush in a moment, but just for now, it is quite useful just to give the something like the right kind of interruption of texture. So that already is a bit more like a slightly disturbed kind of water. You get a hazier look. I'm not sure the textured brush has made a massive difference, but just a little bit perhaps uh, more broken looking than an airbrush. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on to my brushes again. I am going to use the soft brush this time. I'm going to go on to my first colour, which is, if I click on it here, it is a mixture between the blue and the green, and it's quite a dark version of it. And I'm going to use that on the edges. In the distance here, I'm going to have some small lines that interrupt and start to eat into the centre area. So I'm on quite a small version of the brush. So they'll be very fine lines that are quite close together further up. I may even extend those across a little bit more. I can always reintroduce the dark areas of this formation in just a moment, but I'm just starting to break up the edge of it here. Perhaps it stretches the, uh, the forms a little bit. And I'm going to do something very similar on the other side now. So. I know where I want my land masses to stop and the water to begin. So I'm just going to obscure this here. It's probably a bit dark like the blue, but I do have um, a lighter blue to go over it in a moment. I'm just getting rid of some of the, the obvious sort of reflections. I don't want them to be exactly the same. Okay, so I'm going to go to one of my other colours here, the darker colour, and I'm going to start using that just on the, the very edge. I'm going to have it again starting to feed in some closer lines as it gets nearer the horizon line. And then it's actually going to fit with the lines here, so it's going to be on the same kind of line. Maybe it condenses a bit more here, so it's more of a reflection of the colours that are going there, again here. I'm going to do the same on this side. If I move to my next colour here, I've got a lighter colour which is more like the salmon kind of colours that are in the sky. And I'm going to really identify where some of the, the troughs, we've got the peaks there that have extended some of the dark tones down and I've got some of the troughs in the valley between the, the mountain. So I'm going to use that now, maybe turn the opacity of the brush down, make it slightly fuzzier. Identify another one here perhaps. Just so it's exaggerating it a little bit. Look along my colour, I've got a lighter blue 
I did say I was going to go over some of this area with the lighter blue, just knock it back a bit more. And I've also got a brighter yellow colour here as well, so I might just use that quite sparingly in areas here. It's going to reflect some of the lighter colours. I turn the opacity up. I'm just having just a bit more of a broken texture. You're going to notice it most in the foreground area. It doesn't matter if you don't get so much texture in the distance, but you would get some broken forms here right in the foreground. I might even go to a medium brush just to really get more of an extreme form. Perhaps have the gaps between some of these shapes be a bit more noticeable. I'm also going to go back to the pinky colour. I'm going to use that as well. I may even break up some of these dark blue areas. May you the dark, use the darkest colour here to suggest maybe, a, I don't know, a broken small piece of earth or land breaking up that scene maybe. Slightly more foreground. Might even go to my land colours and use some of the greens. In which case I might just use some of the lighter colours to show maybe water breaking up at the edge of that piece of land. I think on that score I'm going to go back to this area as well. Use some of the greens just to really pick up some of the details in this area. As well as the dark green. Just to exaggerate some of these. That's too much in fact. Turn the opacity down just to uh, differentiate this mask from the, the background one a little bit more clearly. It's not going to be as dark as this one, but it's definitely going to be darker than the one immediately behind it. So I'm just going to sharpen up, darken up that form. Maybe bring some of that colour down into this area as well, just a little bit. Likewise here. Okay, I'm going to leave that as it is for now. Um, I could go into more detail, I could zoom in more and really sharpen up some of those finer details on the mountains or the landmass and especially the water. But I just wanted to give the overall effect how you could achieve um, a combination of a sky, land and water all together. And I don't feel like I've been limited by the smaller form factor or the use of the Apple Pencil with the 2018 iPad. It behaves pretty much the same as the first gen iPad Pro, almost identically. So I hope I've shown, doing my usual kind of tutorial, that you can use this iPad to create anything that you, you want. If you do want to see more tutorials like this, please make sure to check out my playlist, press the bell subscribe button, the little symbol next to the subscribe button, otherwise you won't be notified by YouTube. Uh, something to do with the algorithm. If you press the little bell symbol, you will definitely be notified in future. And again, I'd just like to say an enormous thank you to those people that have already supported me over on my Patreon page. Again, there is a link down in the description for that as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I shall catch you back here another time. See you later.